reporter. Police reporter delves into the crime records of the past and from Scotland brings you a famous case that happened over a hundred years ago. The scene of this true murder mystery is Edinburgh, Scotland, the time 1827. It's quite late at night and William Burke and William Hare are standing at the back door of Dr. Knox's house. Dr. Knox is a famous teacher of anatomy and surgery. Dr. Knox. We're Burke and Hare, proprietors of a lodging house in the lower part of the city. Yes? Well, we've come to see you on a little business. I see. And what would your business be with me? We heard, Dr. Knox, that you're after buying corpses. Yes, I am. Uh, I have a surgical school, and I use them in the teaching of anatomy. Well, we got a body we'd like to sell you. Hmm, really? Who is it? The man's name was Donald, and he was one of our lodgers. Oh. Although the law makes it difficult for me to secure anatomical subjects... I'm nevertheless forced to be careful of the bodies I buy. We know it's against the law to sell them, but we're poor men, Doctor, and Donald died owing us over four pounds, so we thought maybe ye could use him. Mm, I understand, and I'm in no position to be overcritical. Well, we thought if we could sell you his body, we might get enough to pay the bill out of it. Well, uh, where is this subject? We've got him right out here in the wheelbarrow, wrapped in a blanket. Can you bring it in the house where it's light, and I'll look at it? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Carry him in, Bill. Aye, he's not very heavy. He was an old man, doctor, without friends or relatives. So you see, there'll be no one to bury him, and we can't afford to. Unwrap him, Bill. Aye. He ain't much to look at, sir, but you might be able to use him in your business. There he is, sir. Mm, quite an old man, eh? Died a natural death, I see. Senile decay, probably. Would he be any good to you, sir? Perhaps. This might be an interesting subject. How much do you ask for it? Well, what would he be worth to you? Mm, I'll pay you seven pounds, ten shillings. Well, that's very generous of ye, sir. Thank ye, sir. That'll pay the old man's bill and give us a little extra for our trouble. You're uh, satisfied with seven pound ten, then? Oh, yes, sir. Very much, sir. Mm, place the body on that table and I'll give you the money. Take his arms, Bill, and I'll take his legs. Aye. Have you got him? Aye, here we go. He won't weigh more than eight stone. On this table. Head up that way. Aye, sir. There he is, sir. Thank you. And here are your seven pound ten. Uh, let me see. Five, six, seven, and ten. Correct? Thank you, sir. And if we ever get any more bodies, will you buy them, sir? Yes, but if you can get younger subjects, I'll pay a better price. Yes, sir. We'll see you again, sir. Soon, I hope. Good night, sir. Good night. The selling of poor old Donald's body gave these two men an idea. During the next two years, they induced homeless and penniless people to come to their lodging house. Those who were lucky died a natural death. The others were smothered. Sixteen were helped on their way to Dr. Knox's dissecting rooms. Two years have passed. The time, just before the arrival of their last victim... The scene, a room in the Burke and Hare lodging house. I'll see who it is. Aye. Well, what is it? Could you spare a few pence for a poor old woman? 
What are you, a beggar? I don't mean to be, but I've had nothing to eat and I've no money to buy lodgings. Well, come in then and rest a while and we'll see what we can do for you. Oh, God bless you, sir. Thank you. Say, Bill, here's a poor old woman with no place to sleep. Well, we have lodgings for travelers. But I have no money, sir. Who said anything about money? Sit you down, old woman. Thank you, sir. What's your name? I'm the widow Doherty. I can tell by your talk you're Irish, so you're doubly welcome to stay with us. God bless you, gentlemen. Uh, we were just about to have a little drop of whiskey. Would you be after joining us, Mrs. Doherty? Oh, I would that. It'll take some of the creek out of me bones. Bring Mrs. Doherty a glass, Bill. Sure, and I will. And fill it for her. And while you're about it, you can fill mine, too. Aye, and me own, too. Tis hallow eve when all good Irishmen should have a draft. Oh, but if it wasn't for you two fine gentlemen, I would have missed mine. Well, here ye are, Mrs. Doherty. Drink hearty. Oh, thank you, gentlemen. And here's good luck to you. As I was saying, Bill, before Mrs. Doherty came in, maybe we can see the doctor tomorrow. Maybe we'll have something for him. It wouldn't surprise me in the least. <coughs> oh, your whiskey is full of fire. <coughs> Just taking a hold with a will. Would you like to lie down, Mrs. Doherty? <coughs> I think maybe I'd better. Put her in the small room in the back, Bill. Why put her in there? Let the old woman have a good room in the front. What difference does it make? I say the old lady's got to have a good room with a soft bed in it. And I say she goes in the little room. That's plenty good enough for paupers. I won't have it. As long as I have something to say about this house, she goes into the good room. Are you looking for a bit of a fight, Bill? I'm not looking for it. Neither am I avoiding it. You seem to be spiling for one. You think so, do you? I do, but no hare was ever afraid of a bark. Well, then take that <gasps> and see how you like oh, it. Oh, so you've hit me, will ye? I'll break this chair over your head. Oh, gentlemen. Out of the way, me. old woman. I'll not be letting you fight about me. So oh, you don't me. like us fighting, do you? Well, how do you like this? Oh. Oh. Grab her oh. arm, oh. Bill, oh. and I'll get her nose and mouth. Oh. Oh. Hold on, Bill. Oh. I'll have her out oh. in the... Then maybe we'll take a trip to the oh. doctor after all. In less than 15 minutes, Mrs. Doherty was just another anatomical subject. The time is the next afternoon, and the two men are waiting for darkness so they can take their latest victim to Dr. Knox. If you'd had the least bit of sense, you'd never have let that other woman, that grey woman, into the house at a time like this. Why did you do it? As long as we've got a lodging house, we've got to take in lodgers, don't we? But not while we've got the old woman's corpse hid under that bed. There's no telling... Well, I've rented the woman a room. We've got to make the best of it. And such a woman. A peeping, prying English woman. She peeps and pries too much. She'll take a trip to Dr. Knox along with Mrs. Doherty. Oh, no, she won't. She has relatives who know she's staying here. But what can we do? Somebody must stay in this room until we get rid of the old woman. Don't you leave this room till I come back. Where are you going? Down to get more whiskey. It's that grey woman. Yeah. Come in. I can't find Miss Stockin. I wonder if it left it under that bed. No, you didn't, Mrs. Grey. Do you mind if I look? Yes, I do. Keep away from that bed. What have you got hidden under there? Nothing that concerns nosy people like you. Now get out of here and stay in your own room. My, what a bear. I'm going out, Mrs. Gray, and when I come back, I want you out of the house. My, what a terrible person, Mr. Eyre. I should think he'd drive all your customer away. Yes, Mum. Have you a few potatoes I could borrow, Mr. Eyre? Sorry, Mum, but I'm after having none. I thought you kept some under that there bed. Will you stop talking about that bed? There's someone at your front door. I hear them. Well, why don't you answer the knock? And why don't you keep your nose out of other people's business? No right, all right, I'm coming. Now I'll see what they've got hidden under that there bed. Oh, holy mother, it's a dead woman. Darkness had barely set in when Burke and Hare started for the rooms of Dr. Knox with Mrs. Doherty's body securely nailed in a tea chest. Again, they're at the doctor's back door. 
Oh, it's you two. Hmm. Good evening. We got something for you, Doctor. That's splendid. Bring it in. Grab hold of the box, Bill. Aye, I've got it. Put it on the floor over there. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, let it down, Bill. Aye. It is only an old woman, Doctor. Bodies be hard to get these days. I'm content with whatever I can secure. Shall I open the box, Doctor? If you will, please. I'll get the hammer. He feel better now. Yes, that Mrs. Gray can nose around all she wants to now. I much she'll be able to find. Here's the hammer. Oh, thank ye, sir. Thank ye. And who would that be? I don't know. I don't want anyone coming in here while you two are in the house with that subject in the box. Open in the name of the law. The police. What will we do? There's nothing we can do but open the door. But if the police find us here in that box right in the middle of the room? If you don't open the door, I shall be compelled to break it down. One moment, officer. Don't open that door, doctor. Please don't. Well, are these the men? Yes, officer, they are. And is that the box? Yes, that their tea chest he's trying to hide. By what right do you come here, officer? I have information that those two men came here with a box. And I have reason to believe the box contains the body of an old woman. I know nothing about it. Well, open the box and I'll look for myself. Very well. Open the box, you two, and let the officer see its contents. Uh, but, Doctor... You heard the doctor. Open the box. Uh, I, sir. And I'm sure when you do open it, you'll find the body of the same old woman I saw under the bed. Then you did give her a chance to look under the bed. I couldn't help it. I had to answer the door. Open that box. Trafficking in dead bodies is a very serious thing, Doctor. I know the law, officer. It's only serious for the cellar. And what does that mean to us? It means that if this box contains a body, you two are in trouble. What for? For unlawful selling of bodies. Is that all? Isn't that enough? Look, officer, look. It is the old woman I told you of. Burke and Hare, in the name of the Crown, I place you under arrest. Even at that, these two reprobates might have escaped with fairly light prison sentences if Hare hadn't weakened and confessed the whole sordid mess. Burke was hanged, but Hare saved his neck by being a witness for the Crown. He died a blind beggar in the streets of London. <laughs>